All right, here we go. Hey guys, hope you are doing well. We are ready for the 60th reading and we are in Judges 15, 16, 17, and 18. Have some shorter chapters here, so uh, trying to keep it right around 20 minutes per reading. And uh, question today is what to do when politics fails you. And uh, I have turned in my Bible to Judges chapter 21, verse 25, and I'll just read it. It says, in those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. This phrase, there was no king in Israel, is all through our reading. It's in chapter 17, verse 6. It's in chapter 18, verse 1. It's in chapter 19, verse 1. And then on to the next reading, finishing the book with 21, 25. No king. There is a longing for a king. And this is why I really like to get into one book. One of the advantages of, um, of just reading cover to cover through one book it's not the only way and not necessarily the best way, but it has advantages is that you can really get the flow of what's happening in that book as it starts leading to the next book and it highlights the narrative, the big picture, the big story of, um, of the Bible uh, that points to Jesus and uh, grace and faith. So uh, there is no king in Israel. Um, at the end of the flow of judges, people are pretty tired of um, judges, you know, not the courtroom guys in a robe and a powdered wig. We're talking about uh, tribal leaders, talking about uh, uh, gifted, strong, uh, energetic leaders in society and in you know, the church could be our our connection to our our day to day, and they're saying um, these leaders are not what we need. Is a king? We have these problems, and remember, oh, there's no king in Israel. There's no king. Um, what? How? How are you feeling? This is 2024. If you're in the United States, it's an election year, and uh, we don't have kings. We have a president, but uh, king is the political leader. And uh, for us, the president is the political leader. And uh, we have so much polarization in society right now. It's so much of politics is divided. It's gone from um, my opinion versus your opinion so that we can reach the same goal to good versus evil. And I think we have different goals. What do we do? It's enough to shake us to the core especially if we have a latent undercover kind of secret desire for salvation through politics, through deliverance, through um, a king, a president, a political leader. And uh, we will find out in first and second Samuel and first and second Kings, not to put our hope in Kings. We have a king of kings. He is the one that brings ultimate provision for society, ultimate protection for society and men, especially as for you married men. Those of us that uh, have ladies, they, they'll turn on the news and they will hear nothing but fear mongers that this could be the final election of America as we know it. And without going down um, the details of that situation, our ultimate peace, our ultimate safety, our ultimate provision comes from the king of kings, not who wins the presidential election. And wow, we can say that in our head uh, objectively, but subjectively, a lot of fear. I know a lot of people in the congregations of churches are coming to you, pastors, and um, they have fear because of what is happening and how we are tapped into the news and tapped into all that society is pumping out in the media and just say, oh, men, if we could as men start out our days not on uh, anything else except the word of God. And no, this is a story to lead, that leads to the king of kings. And he says, trust me, trust me, no matter whether countries rise or fall, whether churches rise or fall, trust me. So many people have left the church in the last 20 years. 
and um, we, we put our faith in things uh, besides the Lord. May we uh, know that the church, <laughs> let the church, let our homes be a place where we worship the King of Kings um, and not, uh, not the ones that come and go during our election cycles. At the same time, may we diligently involve ourselves in, um, in the government that our countries have and to be faithful Christians in those, but never worship them objectively and even more tricky, don't worship them subjectively. Short prayer, dear Father, bless us as men. Help us to be ones that point to the King of kings and the Lord of lords and not put our hope and trust in kings of this earth or any political leaders. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you guys.